In this lesson, I'll show you how to plot a course between two airports, how to find your heading for the airport uh, between the two airports, and your distance, your time and route, etc. All right, so first of all, we need to take our plotter and find the distance between the two airports. So in this example, this scenario, I'd like to go from Edwards County Airport, which is way up here, Edwards County all the way down to an airport just southwest of San Antonio International called Castroville Airport. It's in the town of Castroville. So between these two airports, I'll line my plotter up and we have to make sure on the plotter that we're using the nautical mile side. And if you notice the sectional chart is one to 500,000, the world aeronautical chart is one to a million. In this case, we're using a regular sectional chart. So we'll make sure that on our scale here at the bottom, we're using the sectional side, the bottom side. So we'll line up our airport that we're departing from Edwards County on zero, and then pass the plotter directly through our destination airport down here at Castroville. Now, the first thing I can do is just get my distance. So if I zoom in here, you'll see my distance is about, again, we're using the sectional side, so it's the bottom side. 75, 6, 7, 8, 78 nautical miles. So I can take my navigation log. Got this from dauntlesssoft.com. It's a free navigation log if you want to use the same thing. Um, so I'll just start plugging some data in here. I know that my distance is 78. So distance 78. Um, now we just need to get our true course. So I'll go back, draw my line between the two airports. And then I'll draw my line between the two airports. Good visible line for our route. Now I want to get my true course. We've got these lines that go, um, these longitudinal lines that go up to the North Pole. This is a true bearing, or true alignment to North Pole. And then you've got these magenta lines that come across here. These are magnetic variation lines. And I'll explain those in a minute. But first we want to get our, our um, true course based on our longitudinal lines. So I'll take my plotter. And I will line, I'll stay on my, my route with my plotter, and I'll take the center of this azimuth, and I'll put it right over a longitudinal line. This longitudinal line, line that runs straight through. And by doing so, I get my heading. We know we're going southeast, so if I go um, 110, 115, 16, 17, 118 degrees is our true course. So I can write that down. 118 degrees. And now I need to adjust for our wind correction angle. To do that, we'll need a couple of things. Um, first, we'll need to know how fast we're going to cruise on this particular flight. And to get that information, I can use a performance chart. We're just going to say we have a system 172, 1978 model. And if I look at the cruise performance for this, um, I know I'm going to the east. So I want to fly at odd thousand plus 500 feet. So we'll be flying at 5,500 feet in route. Um, so we'll look at our pressure altitude close to 6,000 is what we'll have for this flight. And we want to run about 2,400 RPM. That gives us a true airspeed of 110 knots. 
So true error speed of 110. So let's just hypothetically say that our winds aloft forecast for this route are going to be at 170 at 22 knots. So I'll take my E6B flight computer, the old manual type, flip it over to the wind side, and first I'll plug in my winds. So we'll assume the winds are at 170 at 22 knots, our winds aloft forecast for our altitude, uh, cruising altitude. So we'll rotate this so that our true index is right on 170, the wind direction. And then I want to plug in the wind speed. So the center point here is my datum. I'll put that on 100 so I can easily measure up to 22. So there's 10, 20, 22 knots. So I've got the wind information plugged in. Now I need to know my true course, which we've already said is 118 degrees. So I'll slide this around to my true course of 118 degrees. And I will slide my wind mark to 110 knots, which we said was our cruising speed for this aircraft. And that gives us a ground speed of 92 for about 95 knots. So we can see that makes sense. The wind's coming from the southeast, south-southeast. We have a right wind correction angle of nine degrees, and we have ground speed It's slowing us down because it's a headwind component of 95 knots. So a nine degree wind correction to the right, and a ground speed of 95. So we'll just plug that information into our navigation log. So we're, our wind correction angle is plus nine, and that gives us a true heading of 127 degrees. Now we have to look at magnetic variation. As I mentioned, these magenta lines, dash lines that go through, they point to the magnetic North Pole, which is crossing it over the Eastern Hemisphere line into Siberia. It's moving at a faster rate than normal. Um, so these, these lines do get updated from time to time. In this case, we have five degrees east magnetic variation. So we subtract east from our true heading, and we add west to our true heading. So in this case, it's east, so we'll subtract five degrees from the 127. So minus five. That gives us a magnetic heading of 122 degrees. There's one more adjustment that we need to make, and that's for deviations in the magnetic compass because of interference with the aircraft's electronics and the frame itself and such. And so typically we'll see a, an aviation, um, typically we'll see a compass card, and that gives us information for this specific installation of the compass. So we have to correct our heading for interference with electronics and steel around the aircraft and such. This is a compass card from an FAA exam, figure 58, in fact. Um, we'll just use this and say that it's our compass card for this flight. So we'll see our, our heading, our magnetic heading, is 122, so that's pretty close to the 120. And it says for 120, we would have to steer 116. So we subtract four degrees from, from our magnetic heading to get our compass heading. Um, so in this case, we have 122 degrees. So we'll subtract the four degrees, and that gives us a compass heading of 118 degrees. Ironically, that's what we started with our true course. We plugged in the wind and we subtracted variation, subtracted out deviation with the compass card, gives back to 118 degrees, purely coincidence. And now we've said that based on the wind that our ground speed will be about 95. So we're gonna put 95 knots in there. And now we have to figure out how long is it going to take us to go 78 nautical miles at 95 nautical miles per hour. And so we can use the other side of our E6B flight computer. This is the calculator side. And what we want to do is put the true index, this black arrow that we saw on the other side. It's also called the true index on this side. We want to put that on our ground speed. So in this case, it's 95. And then we'll look at miles. So we're going 78 miles. So we'll just come over here to, to 
to 78. And that shows us a timing route of 45, 46, 47, 48, about 48.5, we'll call it 49 minutes. And if we just do a double check in our heads, that makes sense because if we go, we go 95 knots for 95 nautical miles, it'll take us one hour. So that should be a little less. And that gives us the 50, uh, the 49 minutes in route. Um, estimated time right is 49. Okay, so that's how we plot our course. We have to remember that we, we start from a true course, which is based purely off the, the line on the chart and a reference to the longitudinal line using our plotter and sliding the azimuth right over a longitudinal line and then reading the heading of 118 here. And then we go from our true course of 118. We calculated our wind correction angle and then we got our true heading and we subtracted our magnetic variation because we had five degrees east, so it's a subtract. Think of this as a magnetic heading. And then we look at our compass card to see what kind of deviation we have. And we subtract out four for this particular compass card that we used. Think of this as a compass heading of 118 degrees. Let's look at something else we can do with this. We can, we can work backwards. Let's say that we went in route and we, we ran that 78 nautical miles but it didn't take us 49 minutes, it only took us 38. So we go backwards and say that, okay, we have 78 nautical miles right here, 78, 78 nautical miles, and it took us 38 minutes. So I'll slide this minute scale, this is the, the inner scale, the first inner scale, I'll slide the minutes to 38. So I'll line up 38, and 78, just like that. Hit 38, 78, and now I can come over here and I can read my ground speed on the true index. In this case, we were running, it looks like 123 knots, nautical miles per hour. So we're, we're doing 123 knots. That means that likely we, because our true airspeed is only 110, Likely we didn't have a headwind. In fact, we had a tailwind on this route. So that we, we can use this for future planning to figure out our next time and route.